Most of today's software solutions are built through microservices. To learn about what microservices are, let's first talk about what they aren't. With the old software development method, we build a single large monolithic application, and it might run on a single server. However, the new software development method is a modular approach, where an application will consist of multiple modules working together. And those modules can run independently of one another. So we can have multiple microservices that can exist in each web app tier, such as a front end tier, a middle tier where the code runs, and then the data tier in the back end for storage. Now, in some cases, the traditional web app tier might not even be used. We might only have the code running in a middle tier, maybe that's triggered on a schedule that talks to the back end data. So API calls are then used to link our microservices together, whether those microservices exist within a single tier or across multiple application tiers. When there are changes made to code, then these changes are applied only to a small modular component, that one module or that one microservice. So then only the modified modular component needs to be rebuilt, tested, and deployed. From a management component, this is applied again to each module or microservice. Things like applying updates, testing, or hardening from a security perspective. We can do that to one microservice independently of the others, so the others could remain running. So there are some dependencies. For example, as some of our modular components or microservices are modified, others might continue running. And they might do this because there's not a real-time dependency on everything running at the exact same time. So a single application, then, can consist of multiple modular components or microservices. And a single application tier might consist of one or more microservices. Each of these components can then focus on a specific business process or requirement in our overall solution. While at the same time, as a software developer, we would need to think about code reusability. Then there's the important aspect of loose coupling via message queuing. So we want to make sure that one microservice might drop messages into a queue that can be read by another microservice at any point in time. There's no real-time dependencies. So microservices types of applications then are considered far more resistant to failure than a traditional monolithic app. And that's because a failure of one component or microservice doesn't bring down other components. Ways that we can manifest microservices and have resilient applications running in the AWS cloud would include through services like 